I'm Chosen Architect, and this is my modded adventure. Now, boy, oh boy, is this mod pack coming together. I just pushed out an update recently that sort of changed that uh, balance stone. I always showed, you know, sort of, sort of early on. And in that balance stone, what I ended up doing was I removed the ability for you to make obsidian via logs, which wasn't very balanced in my opinion, and then also changed the ability for you to convert uh, emeralds into diamonds, uh, pretty much allowing you to have infinite diamonds and infinite of any resource pretty much as soon as you had villagers, like I had shown in a previous episode. I just sorted to roll that back and, well, changed a few recipes. But that doesn't mean that it is any less powerful. It is still quite powerful, for example, converting iron up into diamond and so on and so forth. Uh, but you do have to at least grind out some iron first. And I mean, quite a bit of iron, so it will take some time, but it's still best to mine for it. And that's what I really want to do today is to, well, mine. Uh, but as you can see, the balance stone is now a little bit more balanced um, as it does require eight iron to make one gold. And of course it requires four gold to make one diamond. So with all of that in mind, let's start focusing on doing a little bit of mining and potentially or processing today. That's right, I want to get into a tech mod and that mod is actually going to be Ender IO. Now, before we can make all of that possible, I want to build an area exclusively for Ender IO. And I have a plan, a plan. I want to build it sort of over here and make an extension that leads off from this whole circle here, an extension that leads off to another circular area, sort of around this uh, building that is going to contain a forge. And this is where we're going to put our Ender IO stuff. Now, of course, it will contain a little bit more than Ender IO because I plan on it being like a full processing area for more than just, well, ingots and uh, stone. What I actually want to do right now is collect all of those items. So inside of my spell book, we had already made this extract spell, which pretty much makes a uh, spell self touch. Um, and with this spell right here that we have set up, which is a touch break, two AOE, an extract, and an item pickup, we can make a three by three mining tool that uh, will allow us to silk touch the stone and anything else that we break with this tool. So pretty cool. We can come down here and we can go ahead and mine a spot. But keep in mind, this is using quite a bit of source. And I want to try today as well to increase the amount of source that I have on me. Now, this is where I have to make some choices. Do I want higher mana regen or a much larger mana capacity? And in my opinion, I really love mana regen uh, because it's going to build back up quicker. So we have less waiting, but sometimes you can make it fast enough with the regen that you can use some simple spells very quickly over and over again without any drawbacks. So uh, what do we have to work with to increase those things? Well, right here is the, um, the mana, uh, the amulet of mana region. This is a necklace that I can make. Uh, of course, you start off with a dull trinket, and then we have the choice of either turning it into a mana boost, which will give us more mana overall, or a mana region. Of course, the region one is a little bit more expensive, uh, but I think that is ultimately the better one in my opinion. But you kind of get to choose either one or the other. And then, of course, you have the ring of discount, basically. Um, and so there is a lesser version and then there is a greater version. Um, so this is also, it starts off as a basic and then of course goes into the enchanting apparatus and gets converted. But this one needs blaze rods. So in order to get the higher version, you are gonna need significantly more diamonds, of course, uh, but you're also going to need to have gone to the nether. And here we have the region necklace. Very nice. And then the ring of greater discount which is going to be very handy as well. Now, after all of those things, we do have a slight increase in mana region and the cost is a little bit cheaper. Now, I do think that the rings themselves, they stack. So you can have more than one of the rings. Just keep in mind, they are quite expensive early on. Now, before I know it, I'm going to have my inventory completely filled. And well, our backpack has some support for this. Uh, we have some upgrades that we can apply to our backpack. As you can see, it does have some upgrade slots. And of course we could potentially upgrade it, but I think just putting some basic upgrades in here is going to do the trick. Now, one super useful upgrade is the pickup upgrade, which is going to allow us to have items 
that we want automatically go into our inventory. Now, can we afford the advanced version? Uh, maybe, let's go ahead and take that. And it does require gold in which we are pretty much out of. So I would say we don't really have the ability to afford it just yet, but after we do some mining, we definitely will. Um, and then I think I wanna go this route. Um, hopefully I have enough. We're gonna need eight blocks of iron for this major upgrade. But this is gonna be a stack upgrade which is going to multiply the amount of stackable items by two. And of course, this gets higher and higher, the higher tiers we go. And that means these backpacks can store a humongous amount of items per stack. Uh, so that means if I put this in my bag, uh, we should now be able to, for example, store, let's say cobble, we should be able to store like two stacks in one slot. So that means the storage amount can can scale and it scales so, so very high. Now, something to keep in mind is you can actually in your configs set it up so that way you can toggle on and off your slots inside of your sophisticated backpack. And that means that if I set this to slot one on the pickup upgrade, I can toggle it off and on. I set it to control Z and as you can see it says pickup upgrade switched off and on. And that is going to be super helpful because when I'm mining, I want this on, but when I'm in my base working on things, I probably want it off. So with all that set up, let's get to mining. Uh, so after that beautiful mining session and building session, I now have my blacksmith ready to go and ready to be set up for Ender IO. Yes, this is going to be fantastic. And I have some ideas of how I'm going to implement it into this build. Now to even get started with Ender IO, there's actually some cool steps that we need to take in order to get some of the materials that are gonna be needed in order to get started. So down the hole we go we need to go all the way down to basically bedrock level and uh, we're gonna need a little bit of an area set aside for doing this very specific task now we should be right at the bedrock level or very very close to it so now we have ourselves some exposed deep slate and uh this is exactly what we're going to need so what i need to do is light this on on fire the bedrock and after a little bit of time, when this fire extinguishes, it has a chance of producing this thing called Grains of Infinity. And yeah, it makes a really awesome sound. As you can hear. Ooh, oh, I love that sound. It's so good. It makes like a very nice popping sound. And this is going to be the foundation of Ender.io. Um, so eventually I definitely want to automate this in some way. Uh, as you can see right here, you can also hold flint in your offhand and uh, and some deep slate or cobble deep slate in your main hand. And then you can shift right click a block of obsidian, grind obsidian, or even a grindstone. But I, I really do like this method, which just is so nostalgic. So of course, the other way to get grains of affinity is by putting flint in your offhand and the cobble deep slate and then shift right clicking onto this. And as you can see, it is generating grains of infinity, which is pretty cool. 
and doesn't always consume the flint. Now, one of our first machines is actually pretty basic and it's called the Primitive Alloy Smelter. Uh, and if we take a look at our quest, we can pull this up and I have a quest here that if you craft a basic capacitor, which is what we're going to eventually need, you will get this as a reward, which is pretty nice. So let's go ahead and take a look at Ender IO. And this is all of the mods. There's a lot of glass stuff, a lot of modifiers you can do to glass with Ender IO, which is kind of cool. Uh, but this is the, the basic machine right here. And this is what you would use to technically craft it. Um, now, a capacitor is this. You basically need a capacitor in order for you to be able to run this machine. Now, not this particular machine, uh, but a machine nonetheless, once we actually start crafting them. Um, now this machine, once we place it down, we should be able to see that it just has a coal slot. So really no need for this capacitor just yet. However, it will really come into play as soon as we make our next machine. This mod has sort of an early game progression to it. it it definitely has some early mechanics and one of them to be able to get to the machine that I really want, which is an alloy smelter, which can smelt three items at once, which is very nice and can be upgraded to uh, to have more speed. This thing is going to cost something that we don't have just yet. And that's dark still. I mean, we have a little bit of it, but we haven't started producing any of it. We've gotten it through uh, through loot chests and things like that, but that's about it. Um, now, we could potentially directly upgrade to this. I, I think I do have enough dark still, but... The process of getting dark steel is definitely worth taking a look at because it requires obsidian, it requires iron, and it requires this this uh, powdered coal. And to get powdered coal, until we have ourselves this, uh, this dark steel, we can't make a machine that breaks it down, such as the sag mill, down into this component. As you can see, a sag mill can produce it uh, through multiple means. But what we can do instead is hold some flint in our offhand with three or more coal in our main hand. And what we can do is generate it that way. The, basically the same way that we uh, we made all of that um, grains of infinity. So let's head over here and let's just go ahead and get some of that. So we're going to do the same process. Shift right click. And as you can see, we went through a little bit of our coal. And now we have ourselves some powdered coal. Now with this, we can place in one of our first machines. And this is sort of the format that I want this to be in. I want to have access to the bottom so I can, for one, power and handle the item transfers. But basically, I want them recessed in the wall like this. I think it's going to look a lot nicer. So I put the coal in and then I just simply put my ingredients and this is going to take some time to produce some dark steel. Perfect. Now that I have two, I can start work on a couple of other machines. Uh, and that is going to be going back into Indurio, and we need to make a way to generate power. RF power, well, it's called something different in this. Uh, IU, I do believe, but really it's just basic RF. Uh, and to be able to produce that and store that, we need ourselves a basic capacitor bank. And this right here will allow us to store energy and distribute it uh, to other machines which is going to be very, very uh, handy. It's also a multi-block, so you can add more to this structure to expand your power. And of course, there's upgraded variants of it, which we'll definitely get into, because I think this is a, a really cool, this is a really cool part of Ender IO. And then of course, we're gonna need to generate that power, and that's where this comes into play. The good old Sterling Generator. Now, there are several generators in this pack that you could definitely get started with, but I'm just gonna be sticking for right now with the things that can produce power from the mod itself, Ender IO. Now at this point, I think it's time to end the life of the, yeah, the primitive alloy smelter. Goodbye. And what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna start converting our coal into power into the capacitor bank here. And so this is going to need a capacitor to run. Uh, actually, we're gonna need multiple capacitors because the smelter here also is going to need a capacitor. Um, now, we do have some special loot capacitors that we did find, and those loot capacitors are probably going to be some of the best things that you can start putting into these machines. So, if we search up Ender.io, we should have some loot capacitors laying around somewhere. Huh. I guess I thought I had some loot capacitors, but if you do have them, definitely use them. Um, they are fantastic. And so, instead, I'm just going to use some basic capacitors that we have right here. Now, moving up... This is where we're going to be using that alloy smelter because the next tier to make the next tier up capacitor, well, we're simply going to need to craft this energetic alloy. 
This right here is just going to require these basic uh, ingredients, the gold, the glowstone, the redstone, and then so on and so forth, going all the way up to the octatic capacitor, which needs this vibrant alloy. And then, of course, it's also going to need two of the double capacitors and so on and so forth. And um, this is going to continue to get better and better. This requires the same energetic alloy and ender pearls in order to produce all of this. Um, and then the vibrant alloy is fantastic. But these are also used to make the conduits from Ender IO, which are probably one of the most powerful parts, in my opinion, to the Ender IO mod. Definitely one of the things that draws me into this mod. So to jumpstart things, let's go ahead and put this here, and then we can toss the coal in. And that is going to start sending power into the capacitor bank. Um, now, this has not received any power yet, but it will receive power as soon as we put a capacitor in. So this is drawing power from the bank, and of course the bank is going to store it once this buffer is filled. And then we have some, we have a couple of modes, right? We have alloys only, which will only produce alloys from an inventory, good for automation, and or furnace only mode, which will smelt, like I said, three items for the same time that it would take you to smelt one. Um, and so you can have this set to both, but keep in mind that if you accidentally put the wrong items in, you're going to end up not getting the right product. And then the IO configuration allows you to move your stuff around and see what's connected to it. And if we wanted to put an inventory on top, we could right click this and say pull. That'll pull the items into the slot. And then on the side, we could say output or push. And that is going to send the finished product to the chest next to it. This is very handy when you want to bulk item things, and uh, we're probably gonna end up using this here soon. Now, thankfully, last episode, we got this quartz automated and set up, and this is really going to, uh, to show because I wanna make some conduits, and my first conduit I want is a power conduit. I wanna be able to send power from this bank to another machine, and so I need a cable. However, this does require a lot of sort of finagling to get right, and this is one of those examples, by the way, where having this set to alloy smelting could be bad because I think three quartz in here makes quartz glass and I don't need quartz glass right now. All I need is this to convert into silicon. Now, um, silicon is interesting in how this is going to work because we need to make conductive alloy and uh, the process of making conductive alloy requires this copper alloy. Yeah, a lot of alloys going on. Well, this copper alloy is copper mixed with this and so that is what we're gonna be using to get that. Then we also need to make conduit binder and conduit binder is of course conduit binder composite which is all of those things that we ended up setting up minus clay of course that we ended up setting up last episode and automating so now we have access to all of this stuff it's gonna be quite easy to set up and that is going to lead me into making my first energy conduit so now for the moment of truth we get to craft our first conduit and uh the energy conduit is going to be super nice um, and the cool part is, is later on, if we want to do item routing along with this, you can actually place multiple conduits inside other conduits, taking up the same place, which is, in my opinion, like the ultimate draw of using these conduits. So here we go. I've said conduit enough. Let's go ahead and lay them down. And uh, what we want is we basically want this to pull. I think by default, though, this automatically will just work. Um, but if you really wanted to specify, that's the cool thing as well about this is you can go in here and you can actually define and redstone control everything, set it to insert, extract. It's a really nice pipe. And it's not just given to you. You have to go through a little bit of this grind in order to at least get these pipes up and running. So with that, there we go. We now have a sag mill up and running as well and fully powered. So all I have to do is give this some coal to grind and uh, it should grind it up. So long as we of course configure the pull to pull the items in and the push to send the items into this. So we're going to push the items in and that's going to go in here. This basically being our ultimate output chest. Now, I think, of course, the ultimate grind of Ender IO is, well, the capacitor grind and getting that all up and running. I think the main thing, though, I want to upgrade first is going to be this machine. Now, keep in mind, I did update this and now this should be producing more power for the coal. But keep in mind, this is now going to be using also more power uh, as well. It's going to be faster, but it's going to be using more power. And if I was to upgrade this as well, I don't think that this one Sterling generator will be able to support the amount that all of these machines would need. Um, so I want to definitely get this up to the, the highest tier uh, first. 
before I actually upgrade the sag mill. The sag mill will be fine because it's just going to be producing coal, which we'll use later on. But now, as you can see, this is significantly faster and it's not even fully upgraded. This is only the second tier. And that doesn't even account for loot capacitors, which could make this even faster. And without further ado, welcome to the Octatic Capacitor. Yes, this is technically the high tier capacitor. I don't know um, if there is a higher base modifier that can go on this. No, I, I think this is literally the highest one, at least as of right now, because there's no add-on mods for Ender.io currently, because it's still in like a beta. It's still like slowly being updated, which is really, really nice. Uh, but of course, I remember back in 112, there was a lot of add-on mods that extended the capacitors and of course gave you even more functionality for all of your capacitor needs. Very nice. And of course, this needs to go in my generator for right now because I want to be able to make sure I have enough power to support all of our machines. Now, here's some things that I kind of want to test. Inside of the sag mill, there is a slot that we should be able to incorporate a ball. Uh, it's a little weird. It's like a grinding ball and each of the grinding balls have different modifiers. Um, so if we take a look, you can see there's a ton of different things and you kind of look at the main output, which is how much it's going to output from the, like a guaranteed main. And then of course we have the bonus output, which is how much extra of the bonus item is that going to give us? And of course, Solarium gives us like the, uh, the highest output for bonus, but that really depends on what you're looking for, right? Because let's just say you want twigs and prunes, like you want to be able to get this item. Well, it's probably best that you use this because this is a bonus item, right? And you can see the chances modified and the amount you get should be modified as well. I think for right now though, the best thing for us to use is the, uh, the vibrant alloy and make that grinding ball. Uh, it's not too difficult for us to put this together and we're gonna get 24 of them and that goes in this slot. And what I wanted to test is how much does this now give us from one ore? Okay, so it gave us two copper powder and we then can smelt that by making sure this is set to split. And so we got two, we got two out of that. This is 20 iron that we're gonna feed into this. And is this going to get modified anyway? There was three, three, and then we got cobblestone as a bonus. So there is a higher chance that we can get potentially three iron from doing this. And I like this, I like this. Um, because we would have to have fortune and we just don't have fortune just yet. So being able to, uh, to use our silk touch items in this way to get a bonus, because this was 20. And uh, as you can see, it has definitely doubled the output, a, a guarantee. So definitely early on, this is the best way to go. Now that's all of course, until we get some way to craft enchants and believe it or not, Ender.io also has us covered there. It, it's really, really nice. We have a way of actually producing enchants. And now that is done with an enchanter. Pretty darn cool little machine here. Um, and all we have to do is simply put a book in and the required items for the enchant we want. For example, if I want fortune, all we need is to make sure we can craft this. So you can see right here, fortune, of course we can do it with ours as well. It does require some consecutive stuff, but if we just put a book and quill in here with three emeralds, nine lapis, we can get fortune three for 27 levels. Oh, this is great. Just like that, you can now craft fortune three. And of course, I believe if you had multiple fortune books, you can combine them in an anvil and you should be able to make fortune four and so on and so forth. At the moment, however, I don't know if uh, the fortune three beats out uh, the vibrant alloy ball grinding balls here because this is this is quite nice and it also speeds up the machine and everything. Now, there are ultimately many new things that are added via the Ender IO mod. And of course, we're gonna be getting into more of those in the future and I can't wait to do that. Uh, especially the travel anchors allowing us to be able to travel around our base much quicker and to get to places such as our little area that we have over here. That's gonna be really nice, our little blacksmithing area. Of course, well, blacksmithing because we're dealing with production stuff over there, <laughs> but anyways, Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I hope you enjoyed this build and I hope you look forward to the next episode. And by doing so, be sure to click that subscribe button if you haven't already so you don't miss out on the next episode just like this one. And of course, 
guys i thank you so so very much for watching like i said give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to join the discord discord.gg forward slash chosen architect and join the amazing community today now without further ado i'd like to thank the amazing supporter of today's episode and that is going to go to mg harry hog thank you so much for your amazing support, by the way, over on the Discord, becoming a Discord premium member and supporting in one of the best ways possible. Getting access to those support servers and all kinds of other cool perks, such as world downloads. So be sure to check that out. And of course, guys, I'll see you in the next one. And as always, thanks for watching. Bye.